Hi everyone, today I want to have a look at a habitat just downstream of a major rapid. In the dry season, it forms a slack water pool, so the water velocity slows down, but you still get the highly oxygenated water. Fish that are not quite built for the highest flow of the rapid mix with species that are living in the fastest moving water. Between the rapids, the river looks like a typical Amazonian mid-sized river, winding through dense forest with some fallen trees and plenty of sunken wood in it. At the rapids, it often forms a gigantic step over a bedrock section, followed by a zone of rubble and complex maze of rocks, ideal for fish that live in these habitats. The place we'll be looking at today is the upper reaches of the Tapanahoni River. It's a major tributary to the Maroni, the river that forms the border between Suriname and French Guiana. There are no roads into South Suriname, and this region is so far untouched by logging and it's also too far south of the gold belt and the Guyanas. At least until now, it is untouched by the illegal mines that are destroying many rivers in South America. This land belongs to the Tyrio Nation, and their village captain is one of the people looking to preserve this river basin. There are few places where the forest is so untouched, and where the headwaters of the river are virtually pristine. The Tapanahoni is, for the most part, a shallow river, and there are many huge rapids as it drops off the Guyana Shield. Each of these rapids must be portaged with a huge dugout canoe, and it's very slow going in the dry season. In the dry season, the Podostomase are just dried remnants that look like lichen stuck to the top of the rocks. When their leaves are in the right conditions, however, they first form an incredible carpet of green plantlets, and eventually these fern-like rubbery leaves that feel like they are made from silicone. Many fish species like Acnodon and Meleus feed on these plants, and other species search for insect larvae in them. So what happens in the rainy season? At that time, the water levels rise, and the rapids may become navigable without needing to portage the boats. But with the increase in water level, they are also faster and even more treacherous. Flipping a boat in a place so far from anyone that could help is extremely dangerous and catching fish in the rapids when there's so much water is also extremely difficult. Behind the rapids the water slows down and debris, leaf litter and fine sand is deposited at the base of the lowest waterfall. This place is teeming with life. In the Tapanahoni, with the limited diversity of cichlids, nearly all species occur here. The most common is a Guyanacara species similar to Svenosona. Guyanacara are beautiful cichlids that remain relatively small and when they are not breeding get along fairly well in a group. They are so common in the river that they are often the first fish you will see underwater. The more shallow the water, the smaller their size, with adults usually in water that is around arm's length or deeper. They are constantly digging for insect larvae or worms in the substrate and will frequently flip over leaves or branches to see if something potentially edible is hiding underneath. The males are slightly larger, but with a mixed-aged group of these fish in nature, it's impossible to tell the sexes. Also common are huge schools of Jupiaba munieri, and often they are mixed with Jupiaba maroniensis. Depending on the flow, schools of several hundred of these tetras are found in the lower sector of the rapid, but they can also break off into smaller troops that mix in with the earth-eating cichlids to take advantage of smaller food kicked up into the water column by the cichlids. During the day, Many Roboexodon guyanensis, a slender scale-eating charisin, prey on the tetras in this sector. Occasionally, some young Leporinus granti will appear below the rapids. They much prefer to remain in the leaves of the river weeds where the current is stronger and their spot pattern affords them better camouflage. Behind the rapids, they will just make short appearances, likely to investigate the sound of me flipping over boulders or moving around. Mixed into the Guianacara is one of the most challenging earth eaters of all, Geophagus hereri. At first glance they look quite similar, but unlike the Guianacara, they have many blue sparkling spots on their scales, face and fins, and get to be more than double their size. The problem with hereri, it is a true rheophile geophagus that is not only extremely difficult to keep because it needs excellent water quality, it is also extremely aggressive. Even at fingers length, these fish are not very tolerant of each other and it is one of the more difficult South American cichlids to keep in the aquarium. This area behind the rapids is also a prime place for electric eels. They also know that this is a hub of activity and they will hunt all the smaller fish, especially at night. 
Younger craniocephala multispinosa also occur here. They will get huge, over 40 centimeters or 16 inches. But in this size, just shortly after leaving the protection of the parents, they become solitary strays that roam the rubble zone to hunt smaller fish and some of the bigger insect larvae. The males start to develop more of the small blue spots on their body at this size. It is a beautiful and striking pike cichlids that also requires excellent water conditions and very large tanks to do well in the aquarium. From the aerial shots, you'll have noticed that the river, at least in the dry season, carries clear but slightly tea-stained water. In this sequence of the Gyanakara, you can see how deceptive white balance and the sun angle are in judging the water quality. This water is indeed soft and slightly acidic, but depending on the clouds above, the angle of the sun, and the camera sensor and metering, the water in these scenes may appear clear blue, hazy white, or yellow. Keep in mind that in nature, these factors are not stable throughout the year and likely have no effect on the fish. To film this sequence, I removed a large boulder from the substrate, creating a crater that the Gyanakara like to investigate. During the shot, which is five minutes of video, the sun comes out and the overall appearance of the river changes dramatically. Let's move the camera to a slightly deeper water, at two meters just above my head. Here the substrate has flattened out and there are a few small boulders exposed on the substrate. Only some very large garbage can sized boulders remain. Less cover for the cichlids and the fish are not so much resident but rather traveling through. In part to check out the activity caused by placing the camera. One of the most striking fish in the Tapanahoni is Hippomasticus dyspuxi. A small horizontally striped anastomid that looks like it's wearing lipstick. Because their safety in numbers, these anastomates often occur in huge groups of up to 100 individuals. Seeing these large group of hippomasticus searching for food in the rapids was the highlight of the trip. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video, and ideally share this video on your social media. I have more footage from this region and we'll look at some of the fish living in the rapids and on those green forests of Podostomase as well as how this river changes closer to the headwaters where it is more shallow with slower moving water. See you next time.